statement? My name is John Walker. I'm the chief of police of the California City Police Department. And John is spelled? J-O-N. No H. What do we got today, Chief? I can only give you a recap of what we've been doing since the 21st of December. Uh, just to give you a recap, as you all know, the 21st of December, we got a call to this location about 5.45 p.m. Uh, we were notified that there was two missing children, Orrin and Orson, both uh, four and three years old. There was an extensive search in the neighborhood, uh, which produced nothing. Um, we've done uh, several interviews since then. We've had several agencies involved. Uh, we've been working nonstop on this thing since the 21st of December till today. As we're still working, we've been working around the clock. Uh, we have several agencies involved, like I said, and we're doing our best to locate the kids. So that's all we've got at this time. Um, there are things in the works, but I, I can only, I don't want to taint or uh, uh, compromise the investigation at this time. How many agencies are working with you on this case? Uh, I would say at this time four. We've noticed Bakefield Police Department crew, uh, cars yeah. up here as well, and I understand they've taken some video from some neighbors' homes. How much are they involved in this investigation? Uh, at this point, just peripheral, they're helping us out. And the FBI? The same. Okay. It's been more than a week now since the boys disappeared. It's cold up here. This is desert. In your gut, do you feel these boys are still alive? Uh, I can't comment on that whether I think they're alive or not. I do suspect foul play. Um, we haven't been able to put together, you know, how the boys got out of the yard or where they've gone. Chief, but we're doing our best. General's website, uh, they have the two boys missing. Yes, listed. sir. On Orrin West, they thought it listed him as a uh, fractured leg, a fractured lower left leg, as a identifying mark, and that's on Orrin West, listed as a fractured lower left leg. Were you aware about that? No. Do you believe any reason to believe that these two boys may have been physically abused by their adopt adopted parents? I can't rule that out, but I can't I can't comment on that either. Okay, but there was no knowledge that before that uh, Orrin West had a fractured lower leg? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, well, knowing that, what does that tell you, if anything? I, you know, I can't comment on that either. I mean, that, you know, fractured leg can happen, especially with small children, any way possible. I mean, they fall down a lot, so, okay. but I can't. Why do you suspect foul play in this, in this case? We just, we have, we have no way of knowing how they got out of the yard. Nothing, nothing that shows how they got out of the yard and uh, if they wandered out of the yard, we don't know. It, it, it's a message you have for the community uh, about, you know, how committed they've been to trying to find these two boys and how to maintain, you know, how to stay resolute during this time when we still don't know much of anything. We absolutely appreciate everything from the community. I don't know if you know that first night, there was literally hundreds of people out here looking for them and we truly appreciate that. Uh, I think this whole community is invested in this thing. My department is invested in this thing to the point where, you know, we, we don't want to give up. We want, we want to locate them any way we possibly can. Uh, we're, we're accepting any information that you could possibly give us, any tips. We're following up on everything. Sir, uh, yes, on sir. that note, we've had people ask, should they still look for the boys? It's cold. People have been looking in the night. Um, should the community still look I would never tell anybody to stop. But if, if they have anything that they could give us, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely take it. We'll def Where are the parents at this time? I don't know. I, I know that we, we, I don't know exactly where they are, no. Did, you, did police advise them to get out of the house or because no. there was a search warrant? No. Are they in the house? You don't know? No. Are, so if you guys needed to contact the parents, do you guys have the availability to do that? Or yes. Okay. Yes. Um, are the parents named suspects in this case? Not at this time. Chief, as you know... There are no uh, named suspects at this time. While it's possible that the boys could have been picked up by a complete stranger... Absolutely. Isn't it true that in these types of cases, the majority of times, some family member or somebody known to the family is involved in abducting children? In my experience, it's been very common, yes. That it's usually a family member? That it could be, yes. Do you have any of the other four kids in custody right now? Are they in police custody? Oh, the, the other four kids are in protective custody right now, yes. And have you questioned them at all? Uh, I can't they? comment on that right now. Do you know how old they are? Could you tell uh, us? I don't want to comment on that either. Average age? 
Just going back to the day these kids were reported missing, just to confirm, that was Monday night, correct? Monday night, and 21st of December. And who reported them missing? The parents. Okay. Um, you guys mentioned that there, there was a lot of folks left from the backyard. We noticed a lot of uh, tools were used in the backyard. Can you talk about some of the work, what you guys were trying to reveal back there? We're just trying to dig up anything, any clues that we can possibly find to find out where they had gone and, and, and also to confirm that they're not in the backyard. How extensive was the digging in the backyard? Fairly extensive. Anything useful turn up? No. What message do you have for anyone? I feel like someone out there knows something that more that might help you guys move forward in this. What message do you have for someone I, who knows I definitely that? believe people know. Someone knows, and I would I would hope that person would, would come forward. I mean, we got two young, I mean, in my opinion, babies that we don't know where they're at and we can't find them. So if that person or any of those people have any, any idea where these kids are or can give us any information that we could follow, it would be truly appreciated. It's been over a week. At what point does this come become a cold case? Is there still a lot that needs to be? Oh, yeah. It, it's not even, it's not even, no. It's not even close to becoming a cold case. It's an active investigation. It's going on right now, as we speak. I guarantee you. What are the steps moving forward for your, for your guys and the other agencies involved? Just to continue to evaluate all the evidence involved and, uh, and, and, and interview anybody that we think is a person of interest and gather as much intel as we possibly can until we come to a conclusion. Do you think you're going to go back in the house at any point? You have that search warrant still, right? It's absolutely possible, yes. What about the uh, biological parents in Bakersfield? Have they been cooperative in this investigation? Uh, for the most part, yes. Yes. California City has the third largest land area in the entire state. That There's is a correct. lot of ground to cover, sprawling desert. Have you guys started combing through the desert yet? No. No, we have no reason unless we have any other tips that they could possibly be out in the desert. Uh, it's been my experience, especially with small children, you always start from the inside out. You start from where were they seen last. And if we, we feel that we have enough information and enough evidence to expand out, we absolutely will. But at this point, we have, we have no reason to believe that. The adoptive father told us that, you know, he wished he could go to every house, knock on the door, see if their kids were inside. From a law enforcement perspective, when you say you want to start from where the kids were last seen, how many neighbors have you guys contacted here? And is it difficult to be able to search inside anywhere like that? But we've, we've contacted just about everybody in this neighborhood. And, uh, you know, we've, we've talked to everybody in the neighborhood. Just our, our, our goal is to, to, to basically locate the kids. So if I come to your door and I knock, hey, have you seen these kids? You know, and then we move to the next, and we move to the next, and we move to the next. Uh, unless we have any other information that leads us to the point where we can actually enter their home and look for a child, we can't do that. So, so it'll be accurate to say, and I apologize if I'm reiterating this, from every neighbor you guys spoke to, not a single sight of them? No. No. When was the most recent that a neighbor sighted they'd seen the kids? We, we, none of the neighbors have seen the kids. Ever? At what point did you guys decide to bring out dogs to try to hop out and do some better? Done that. It's been done. Multiple times. And the canines consistently found that the scent of the children did not leave the house? Correct. Just to break that down a little bit, picking back of, uh, uh, picking back off of uh, Perla's thing, when you guys use dogs to search for missing people, uh, if their scent was just even a bit outside of the home, would they... Would they actually follow that sign? Generally, yes. But it all depends on the dog as well. You know, uh, it could be the wind blowing, it could be the dog can't pick up the sand, it could be a lot of things going on, but that's that's the general idea. That's the that's the hope. Could you explain how police were able to get a warrant inside the house and, and retain custody over the rest of the four kids, even two of them are biological? Oh, that's uh, the fact that the kids are missing, that's the easy part. Um, you know, getting obtaining the warrant was easy. I mean, we do like we do every warrant search. You're allowed you, enough enough evidence is the kids were missing, and you were able. That to is get correct. When you have correct. Chief, could you clarify though why the kids were put in protective custody from the from the parents here? Anytime anything happens in a household where that involves any kids, all the kids are taken out of the household. 
Now we've noticed DPD here in California City, we've noticed FBI, and we've noticed that several cars have been parked, law enforcement, undercover vehicles have been parked near here around several streets. Why is that? Can you explain anything? Should oh, we definitely just, we, we want to keep an eye on the area. And again, if we ever get any evidence, the kids could be anywhere in this neighborhood. And also just to keep an eye on the house and see who comes and goes. Has there been a human trafficking issue in Cal City or recent cases? Not that I'm aware of. And sorry, I just want to go ahead, Perla. Did the Luminol find anything? Not that I know of. I just want to piggyback, uh, piggyback off of a, a recent question here. Um, when you say whenever there's a situation involving kids, the other children go into protective custody. Normally, yes. Well, from my understanding, like, you know, we have a lot of missing, you know, persons cases in Bakersfield. And when a parent reports their child missing, the other kids aren't taken away from them. So what circumstances have to be in play in order for the other children of the household to be in protective custody rather than the custody of their parents? Well, gen generally to take, if, there, if there's any kind of uh, a juvenile situation where there's been any kind of neglect or um, any kind of harm to any of the children, we automatically have to take all the other kids out of the house. So until there's an investigation done so by child protective services. You're saying that, based off of that, that there have been other types of abuses. No, I'm not saying there was abuse at all. I'm saying we, the kids are missing, okay. and we we can't put that together. So until we we determine one way or the other what happened to the children, the other four children are taken out of the home. Now the parents can try to go to children's services and get the children back. But that's totally up to Children's Services. Chief, if somebody wants to come forward with information but they're afraid to come forward publicly, can, how can they do so anonymously and contact you? They can, they can call our station, leave a number, leave information, whatever they want to do, and but we'll get back to them. Can't you guys trace the phone, a phone number? I mean, if somebody really says, look, I don't want to get involved, but here's the information you should know. Is there any way they can contact you without with being totally anonymous? Uh, call the station. That's all I can say. That's all I would hope. Where else are you, are police and agencies searching? Or where are they currently searching? Or do they believe that they're still... I, I can't on? comment on that right now. Okay. Can you say if you're searching in Bakersfield? I can't comment on that right now. <laughs> How about words for the community? Because obviously there are a lot of signs out on the main roadway that are asking where are these boys at? Of course. So what, are the, what are your words for the people that are asking that, so, that same question? And asking these same questions that we are asking you. Today. Well, my answer to that is that's my question as well. I want to find these kids as much as anybody else. And so whatever information they, and we're actively at it. I mean, around the clock. We haven't given up on this thing. We want to keep, uh, keep on it as, as uh, diligently as we can because we know the clock's ticking and we really need to find them. So my, my answer to those people would be I want to find them as bad as you do. And if you have any information, please come forward and give it to us, and we'll follow up. Chief, you're not a very large police department here, a small police department. We're very small. City. How many, how is this case, what impact has it had on your resources? Huge, huge. I got people that are on their days off coming in. I got people that are supposed to be working days that, you know, I was putting 19, 20 hours in last week myself. So my guys, they're working tirelessly on this thing and not complaining because they want to find these kids as bad as everyone else. Do you have any reason to believe that the kids are still inside the house? No. Even though the canines didn't smell their scent? No, and I've been in the house multiple times. And, and Mr. Walker, just talking about the different agencies helping out, uh, part of it is because to help with manpower, correct? Correct. If you could talk about general assignments, the FBI, what aspect of it are they looking at? What aspect is KCSO looking at? Do you guys have those kind of designations on who does what? Well, basically all those bigger, the bigger um, agencies, they, they have all the, um, the other resources like the crime labs and that sort of thing. So they're really helping us out with that, analyzing any evidence we have and uh, any clues that we can come up with. So that, that's a real big help for us. Para Telemundo. Gusta decir algo en español, lo que sea, nada más para la gente que esté escuchando, porque hay, hay gente hispana que, que vive aquí en California City. Sí. Eh, ¿Qué mensaje le tiene usted a la persona, a la, a la comunidad hispana, para ayudar a encontrar a estos dos niños? My Spanish is really bad, but uh, yo quiero mucho ayudar, por favor. Dígame, por favor, llámame, por favor.
para encontrar a los niños. Sí, por favor. ¿Piensa usted que los niños están vivos? ¿Piensa usted, are the, do you believe that the kids are, are still alive? I, I want to believe that, yes. Gracias. Thank a, you very much. A lot of people have been wondering about um, what constitutes an Amber Alert. And why one Generally, I, I, an Amber Alert, the way I understand it, uh, to the best of my knowledge and my experience, would be if we have a known person uh, who has taken the child and we have a vehicle information uh, about that vehicle, so we put that out for all the drivers and all the commuters to be on the lookout for that vehicle and that license plate number so, in fact, we can uh, recover the child. We don't have any of that information at this time. I also want to confirm one thing just to make sure we're putting out the most accurate info. You said that since this couple has been here, um, that there was never a sighting of the children? Not that we know. They've only been here since September. Okay. Was there a sighting of the parents' other children? Not that I know of. Okay. No. Can we ask a question as a community? What sure. do you want us to do? I heard you say you guys aren't going to go to the desert. If whatever you feel that you want to do in that aspect uh, is, is, is more than, uh, it's welcome. What, whatever, I'm not going to close any doors. Whatever's open, I'm willing to take. And if you can come up with any clues, any information that we can follow up on, we most, we most happily will. Okay, thank you. We just wanted, because we heard you say earlier, you know, you guys weren't going out there, but there's so many of us still willing to. That, you know, and that's fine. You know, it's vast. We know right. you guys only have a certain number of people, right. so and, we're and, still willing to help. Yes, ma'am, and I appreciate it, uh, but our resources, we have to yes. concentrate on where we saw them last, and if something leads us to expand our search, we absolutely will. Okay. Thank and you. I, and I'm, 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 I'm sorry? Somebody yesterday informed me they spotted a vehicle that looked identical to the parents' van coming back from the direction of Cerro Saddle on Sunday, the day before the boys were reported missing. I can tell you that's not possible. I heard the same thing. Uh, um, let me dispel that right now. That's not possible. Are there any other rumors? Can yes. you say it again, Chief? What's not possible again? That the van was seen somewhere out near several shadow yesterday. No, it was seen the Sunday before they were reported. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, we can follow up on that. Sure. Yeah, we reported Thanks. it and, you know, never heard back. Okay. So well, it... Sure, that's a possibility. But right, right now we we are we're not going to spend the resources on that right now. We we're concentrating on right here. Chief, there's obviously a lot of information out there. Are there any main rumors that you want people to just stop spreading? Is there anything else you could dispel? I main rumors that uh, rumors are rumors that the people are going to say what they're going to say. Um, but just so they know that we haven't given up on this thing and we are working still diligently to try to find these kids. And I'm being asked to ask this question as well. In the last decade, there have been several unsolved, either missing persons cases or homicide cases. As a police chief, what trend have you noticed here that contributes to that? What do people have to think about when they say, well, well I need you to be more specific. What are you referring to? Well, we, we did a story with the police chief at the time, Mr. Hurtado, back mm -hmm. in 2019. And mm -hmm. you got, we talked about the $25,000 rewards that you guys now have for multiple unsolved oh, cases. I, I, uh, yeah. Yes. Right, but right now I have, I have a full-time crime analyst that's working on any cold cases that we have. But any city that you have is going to have cold cases. It's just the larger the city, more cases you're going to have. Right now we're holding eight cases. And uh, again, I have a crime analyst who works full time on that. And uh, what, what has he shared with you? Because you said the bigger the city, the more cases there's going to be. Um, well, in the last decade, this is a, a population of about 14,000. I think 2,500 of them are counting the prison population. So what do you think contributes to this sort of crime here? The missing persons, the homicides. What, what are factors that come into play there? Uh, again, we've, I think we only have one missing person at this time and the other are unsolved homicides. But we're a small city, you're right. And we've only had eight at this time. So if I was in a city of, say, Los Angeles of 4.5 million people, they're probably carrying a couple hundred uh, cold cases right now. So, you know, like this year alone, we've had no homicides at all. So it's just a matter of uh, population and, and crime. One more so. question for me. Um, uh, did the parents deny to take a lie detector test? 
Uh, I can't comment on that. And you, would you be able to provide us the 911 call that they made initially? Uh, can I provide it? Yeah, the recording of it. I'm sure police have all the recordings of uh, I'd have to look into that right now with, with our investigators and see if they want to release that at this point. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Last question what for me. The 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 it's under the authorities. Or the we have it in custody. Uh, sorry, Chief. Last question for me. Um, can you confirm since the beginning of this uh, incident from last week that there has been nobody detained or arrested during this entire investigation? There's no one been arrested. Has anyone been detained? Well, people have been questioned. Okay. Formally de detained, no. And not held in custody upon their own will? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thanks so Thank much. You, Chief. Thank you. We'll be in touch.